Hello, friends. And let's try this one more time, but how about with sound? First, thank you to all of you guys that told me that there were no audio on the original upload. I appreciate you guys so very much. Second, I am Brandy with Boundless Treasures Boutique, and today we are going to be doing this full wrap camo tumbler. So I hope you all enjoy for real this time, and don't forget to like and subscribe. So to start, we are going to sand and prep our tumbler. I am going to use my hand sander, but of course you guys do not have to use this. You can use a piece of sandpaper or a sanding block or even final sand will work. If you're using sandpaper or a sanding block, I recommend 80 to 120 grit, just enough to take off the protective seal. Now, while I am prepping this, I do want to let you know that pieces of this are modified. Reason being is because there are pictures of my customer's children and I wanted to respect them and her um, and I did not want to show them all over my YouTube. So, on to our next step. We are going to base paint this black. Now, the base does not need to be perfect. You are just going to want to make sure that the top and the bottom have good coverage because those will be peeking through our vinyl wrap. Once you have completed spray painting, you're going to want to allow it to dry. It took about 20 minutes for mine to dry. From here, we are going to start applying our full vinyl wrap. Best way to do this is you want to measure out the width and length of your cup and cut accordingly. Now, when I'm applying my vinyl wraps, I like to use what's called the hinge method, which means I take off about an inch of the backing and I use that to anchor down the vinyl. And to ensure that I get a perfectly straight application, I go in with my Cami Page Boutique Ultimate Tumbler tool and I make sure to draw a straight line down the entire length of my tumbler using my pencil. If you do not have this tool, that is absolutely fine. You can use a ruler or anything that's going to create a straight edge. From there, apply that one inch of open space of vinyl and use your squeegee or both your thumbs to press the vinyl down nice and firm. You're also going to want to cut off any excess from the top and bottom once you get this applied. Now, I personally like to have clean edges on both the top and the bottom and make sure that my vinyl is not overlapping. So in order to do that, I apply a piece of painter's tape and draw my line straight down so that I can lift up any of the remaining. From there, we're going to go pop any tiny little air bubbles we may have and use our cup edging tool to create our top and bottom edges. So they're nice, clean, and crisp. And this is why the black spray paint at the top and the bottom were so very important. Now, once you have your edges done from there, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So from here, I'm going to use the font. My customer wanted the font Tracy Queen. So I went in, searched the font, and downloaded it. Once I have downloaded it, I install the OTF. That is going to be what allows that particular font to show up in my system fonts. Once that is done, I'm going to go into my Cricut Design Space. I'm going to start a new project. And from there, I'm going to click my text box. Once I do that, I'm going to go into my fonts. I'm going to move over to system and type in Tracy Queen. If for some reason you don't see the font that you just downloaded there, close out of your system and reopen and it should be there. If it's not, it probably was not installed properly and you're going to want to follow the installation steps provided by the font application that you're using. Now my customer wanted the word dad and we love you underneath it. So I typed that out, sized it accordingly to fit the length and the width of the desired cup, 
and I also selected this and attached them. Now, the reason I attached them is so that they all cut together versus separately. Um, this isn't a necessary step, but it is one that I do prefer. From there, we are going to go and we're going to simply hit continue and cut out our decal. I did select premium vinyl. I loaded up my materials and I got to cutting. Now, again, this next part that's coming up is going to be modified. The reason for that is there were young children in the pictures that were added to this customer order. I did not feel that it was appropriate or respectful of my customer or her children to have them in my YouTube video. So I did choose when going through the print and cut to use a picture of my own. Now, that also means that my final steps for epoxying as well as a full video are not going to be shown. I know that this is super inconvenient, but the purpose of this tutorial was to learn how to apply the full vinyl wrap portion, as well as to go more in depth into the print and cut portion of Cricut Design Space, which was a question that was previously asked from another video. With all that being said, now it's time to get into print and cut. So from here, what I'm going to do is you're going to click upload in your design space. If you have a silhouette, I apologize. I'm unsure what those steps are. You're going to select upload image, then browse. Because this is a picture, I'm going to go into my photos and I'm going to select the one of me and one of my very good friends. We are going to use this picture as an example for the print and cut. Click open and you'll see that your picture is uploaded. Now, I always choose complex when using photographs. The reason being is because this will provide me the best quality of the picture that I am applying to my cut. You're then going to select print and cut and then continue. Once you have that, you are going to select your picture and simply add to canvas. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you size it accordingly, whatever size you are looking to do, depending upon how many pictures you are putting onto your cup, is going to determine, obviously, the sizes that you are going to use. I am simply making up sizes at this point because this picture is just for tutorial purposes and will not be used on any cup. From there, you're going to want to click Make It. Once you've clicked make it, you are going to want to make sure that everything is sp spaced correctly and that your material size is also correct. From there, click send to printer and you'll choose whatever vinyl, sticker paper, anything like that that you are wanting to use. You'll want to also make sure you turn off your ad bleed and then hit print. For this particular cup, I did use printable vinyl. This is a glossy vinyl, which means my Cricut is not going to cut with that vinyl because it doesn't pick up on the sensors. However, if you use matte, this will not be a problem. This is the finished cup. Again, I hope you all enjoyed and thank you so much. See you next week.